you are about to meet an amazing gal who happens to be my daughter-in-law. She's married to our youngest son, and they have four beautiful children, Lennox, Hines, Lincoln, and Naya. Besides being a wife, mother, and homemaker, she homeschools her four children. You will hear that she's a trained teacher, but she firmly believes a mother does not need to be a trained teacher to teach her kids. I am very aware that many listeners are against homeschooling, or at least nervous about it, and that is perfectly fine. But I have a feeling all of my listeners would be just tickled pink if Drew Goddard was teaching their children or grandchildren. As grandparents, my wife and I are tickled pink, I can tell you that. Drew will quickly say that homeschooling is not for every family, and there are several reasons for that, but I also know there are some mothers in a position to do it and are struggling to take the plunge. Maybe this podcast is for you. Drew and her brother were homeschooled by their mother, and their mother did it right. Drew received a full ride to college and graduated with honors. You will also learn that Drew, who is multi-talented and extremely creative, has more social graces than you can shake a stick at and can handle herself in any situation she finds herself in life, no matter the circumstances. The idea that homeschoolers cannot turn out to be well-balanced people holds no weight in the case of Drew Goddard. Drew's number one priority at this point in her life is to educate and raise children who become well-rounded adults who are grounded in their faith. From what I see, I have no doubt she's exceeding expectations. How this beautiful, patient, and gracious lady balances being a wife, homemaker, mother, homeschool teacher, decorator, and creative genius is beyond me. Drew grew up performing with the piano and with dance. She's still performing, but these days her performance is for an audience of one. And I think you will agree that she has his full attention. And her husband and children are the beneficiaries of one incredible performance. Viewing life from a hearse, it could be worse. Laugh, think, and cry with the country undertaker. This is Bruce Goddard, and you're listening to the View from a Hearse podcast. As I just said, I have my beautiful daughter-in-law, Drew, with me today. You're going to be amazed at what she does if you don't know her. She is the wife of my youngest son. She is the mother of four children. She's a stay-at-home mom, but she also homeschools her children. And then in addition to that, we're going to talk to her, as I've already mentioned, about her decorating ideas she's got on social media and on Instagram Uh, We're going to talk about that. Uh, Just a very, very interesting person, and I can't wait for all of you to meet my Drew. So, Drew, thank you for doing this. You'll do anything for your father-in-law, and I appreciate you doing this. I know know you're busy with all you got going on. (laughs) I'm so flattered that you asked me. Oh, my goodness. So I I want to start talking about, let's begin. Of course, I met you. How old were you when you started dating Luke? I was 17. So you were 17 years old, and you mm-hmm. were just blew our minds. And I knew immediately that you came from a wonderful, wonderful family, and especially your parents. So let's begin and let you talk about your mom and dad, Melanie and Mark, a wonderful folks. Just talk about what it was like to grow up in their home, because I know much of what you do today came from that. Please talk about them a little bit. Okay, I would I would love to. Um, my dad is a pastor, and um, we he was in ministry most of my life, and my mom stayed home with us and homeschooled me, me and my brother. They're just the best parents that I could have ever really imagined. Um, my mom did a wonderful job homeschooling us, and being home with us and um my dad you know just the best the best dad (laughs) he was just so always 
playing with us and involved in everything we did. Yeah, and, and just so people will know, when you went to college after being homeschooled by your mom, really mm-hmm. all, all 12 years, all right? All 12 years, yes. You went on a full scholarship to Wesleyan College, so she did something right, and your, your brother Corey <laughs> has done well too. So yes, I know people want to know how you do what you do in homeschooling four kids at different ages, but you learned it from the best from your mom. And, and I know, right. I know it has to make her smile to see what you're doing. And it makes mm-hmm. everybody smile, Drew. I mean, people see on, on social media, what you're doing with these kids cooking and everything else you do <laughs> as a homemaker. I don't know how you do it for sure. So first talk about your experience. And I know people, the first thing people want to know before you start talking about your kids, your own experience of being homeschooled. Okay. Your parents had you involved in a lot of extracurricular activities, right? I mean, you were not just, some people think you just stay at home and don't hang around other people, but that was not the case. No, it wasn't. And we, I was homeschooled all 12 years and we had in Macon, there was a big homeschool community when I was growing up and we had a homeschool group and They had like a basketball team and um, dances and all the things that like I didn't never really felt like I was missing out on anything that the kids that went to public school or other schools were doing. And I felt like I really had all of those opportunities. You know, I was able to finish my school at a reasonable time every day. I was able to have like a part time job and do other things that I wanted to do. And um when I got to college, I just, I felt really prepared. In fact, I felt, you know, just as prepared, if not more than some of the other girls I was in school with, because I was used to kind of pacing myself and, and, you know, looking at what I needed to do that day and getting it done. And so I think that it gave me a lot of skills that I don't know if I would have had. Yeah. So it's interesting that what you just said is that you, because of homeschool schedule you don't have all the breaks and stuff or whatever mm-hmm. people do in the public school so you actually worked and you had a part-time right. job at an early age yeah. you learned yeah. the value of hard work i certainly grew up working but now the kids not many of them do that <laughs> you know it's just right well they don't really have time yeah because of all the stuff that they they're doing i agree I right agree. so all of a sudden you're and we could talk about Corey too but we just focus on you because Corey was just as successful but i remember mm-hmm. going to watch you dance i guess when you were a senior in high school i was watching you right yeah yeah i, I did dance and uh piano those were my kind of two big things that i did yeah. uh growing up and those were my little outlets i guess you could say i vividly remember i know there's videos of it because you and luke have videos of most everything that luke does anyway (laughs) i remember when one of his brothers were getting married or somebody was getting married you were teaching him how to dance i can see that right now i mean you (laughs) you, you remember that in our den you teach him how to do it i remember that so so, folks this is drew goddard she's a amazing person and she is multi-talented i can tell you you heard her she plays the piano she can also sing she is a, a great mother, a great teacher. So go back to school. Let's talk about college. So you you started applying for colleges, and mm-hmm. you ended up at Wesleyan. So talk about that. Talk because I know you got a degree teaching, right? I mean, you became right. A- well, I went. I wanted to go somewhere local because well, I was dating Luke, and I didn't want to leave him. <laughs> That's good. And I'm glad so, you didn't. I know. So I wanted to stay close by and. I liked Wesleyan's a women's college, and I liked um, kind of the history that it had, and I liked the campus, and um, kind of how small the class sizes were, and so that's where I ended up going, and I, I started out as a music major there, ended up switching to education with a music minor, so that's, that's what I studied, and a lot of my scholarships were from the music department. And you also graduated magna cum laude right yes i did and i came to that ceremony or one ceremony you were getting something i think everybody was out of town i don't know how i ended i think i was the only one there i'm you maybe your oh parents. yeah you remember that uh-huh yeah i do remember that it was the honor society and i don't even remember now what it was called yeah whatever but it was it, yeah yeah 
it was really important. Grades were really important to me. So I tried really hard. It was didn't come easy, but well, I don't know why. Now, now nobody cares what grades you make in college. But you know, made in college, but it was important at the time. You know, what's interesting is that what many people think if if I homeschool my kids. I'm not sure they can keep up with what people are learning in school. Well, well you, you, you and Corey both are proof that you, you <laughs> really, I mean, there was no comparison. You were ready. Mm-hmm. You made nothing but A's, and you graduated magna cum laude. And, and watching you now, what you're doing with your kids and seeing where they are academically, and we're going to talk about all that and how you do it, but it's amazing. It's amazing. And your mom would probably say you, you're taking it to another level. She never had four. She had two. She taught you what you're doing, but it's absolutely amazing. You taught you. briefly in the public schools. So talk about that. How long yes. was that? A year or two years? Or how long did you teach? I taught for two years. Um, I had one year. I taught first grade and here in Macon. And I taught one year. And then the second year I taught, I had Lennox kind of midway in the year so I was on maternity leave part of that year so but two two school years is what all I did <laughs> when you were doing that but you already knew when you started having kids you were going home schooling because of your own experience right is that what you were well or not? you know I really wasn't sure um until I started I really wasn't sure when I was in college what I would do with that and then once I had Linux and once I was teaching in the public school system that's when I knew that I went to school. Right. So Once I became a parent and was in the in the schools every day, that's when I knew. Right. So let's back up a little bit. You've already had Linux, but let's talk about you and Luke meeting and just. I know I've had both of you on here before, folks. If you're listening to this, one of my first episodes in the beginning, I had Luke, and then I had Luke and Drew. You go back and listen to this. They talk about they they had a. A video, their proposal went viral. It was on national TV. Uh, you can go Google Luke and Drew marriage proposal on YouTube. You'll find it. But talk about you and Luke getting married and, and just a little bit of how all that happened. We don't have to get into details, but I want to at least uh, mention it in this story. Oh, yeah. Well, I met Luke when I was 17, and he was 19. And, um, I don't know. It was almost, it was kind of like a love at first sight kind of thing. We just really hit it off right from the beginning and um, loved each other really early on and kind of knew that we were meant for each other. It was kind of, kind of one of those once you know, you know kind of things. And so um, we got married when I was 21 and he was 24 or yeah, he had just had a birthday. So anyway. Um, so we were kind of young, but obviously no regrets because it was just, we're just made for each other, I think. I agree. So how long have you been married now? I can't keep up with it. We've been married 13 years. So 13? We've been together 18 years. Wow. Unbelievable. So you've got four beautiful children, people that follow you on social media. But by the way, folks, on Instagram, uh, it's called Drew. It's called the Light Homestead. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes, and it. so, and if you follow Luke on social media, you see pictures and videos of their kids, beautiful kids. So, talk about your children. Okay. Well, Lennox is eleven, and she is our oldest, and she's she loves to dance. She's really into dance and she is so much like Luke in the fact that she loves to make videos and she would 100% have her own YouTube channel if I would let her (laughs) and uh, she's as sweet as can be the best big sister and then um, Heinz is our oldest boy he's nine and he is right now he's super into outdoorsy stuff he loves to run through the woods and um, in fact, he's like broke out with poison ivy right now because he's been uh-huh. in the woods so much. And then we have Lincoln, who is... He's been deer hunting too, right? Yes, he's been hunting and he he also loves baseball. He's just right. um, very active. And then we have Lincoln, who is six, and he is he's my little baby boy. And he's 
just sweet as can be. He loves uh, video games. <laughs> yes, he does. But he is so smart, and they're all honestly, they're all so smart. And but Lincoln is just one of those like I don't really have to teach him a whole lot because he just kind of absorbs things. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's amazing to me. <laughs> and then we have Naya, who is four. And she is the boss of the house. <laughs> but she rules the roost. So sweet. Oh, yes, she does. Yes. But she's sweet as pie and cute as pie, too. So, Naya, for you listeners, is, is she's named after my mother, Naya, mm -hmm. N A I A. And my mother went to heaven long before this Naya was born. But I guarantee you, if you can look down from heaven and smile, she's smiling big watching Naya. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. as Kathy and I are, and as Mark and Melanie are, watching these kids grow up under under Drew and Luke too, but Drew with them every day, all day, every day, it's absolutely phenomenal thing to watch. So let's go back, Drew. You decided at some point you decided you were going to homeschool. There are people that hear that and the first thing, my kids – I wouldn't homeschool them because they won't have the social skills they need. Uh, your kids got more show, social skills than most anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> so, uh, and you certainly do. And, and Corey, your brother, does. So I, I, I know that's not true. And I, I don't know what the other stuff is. Maybe you're being isolated from other people. J just talk about why you're doing it. Well, I mean, I knew, I knew first of all, that it can be successful. Because um, you've because seen it. I yeah. had success with it, yeah. And, um, you know, I, my view of it, I guess because I've been through it, I don't really have a lot of the negative viewpoints that others may have. But to me, it teaches, teaches you to, you know, think critically and think out of the box. And, like, I don't know. There's a, I feel like there's a lot of problem-solving skills that come with being homeschooled. Um and the social aspect, I feel like a lot of homeschooled children can socialize with people from all age groups, True. as opposed to only being able to relate to maybe their peers. Well, just because they're around a lot of different people all day long or, you know, in different scenarios. But yeah, I, when I was thinking about homeschooling, I, I felt, you know, confident that it could work, which I know. Like when my mom was homeschooling, that was not like a super popular thing to do when I was in kindergarten. So she really, you know, had to step out on a limb and do something that probably her family was like, what are you doing? Sure, sure. You know, and so, so that was really brave of her to do that. And for me, I feel like I have it a little bit easier because I know, I know it can be successful and I also have the teaching experience from teaching school which I, not you don't need to do to have that to be able to homeschool but i feel like that gave me a little bit more confidence that i could do it you know yeah i mean you're a trained teacher and all what you're saying is absolutely true one of the main things that i started to notice when i was a teacher is i taught first grade and the kids were you know like six Right. And seven, and I just started to observe how long their days were and how much they had to do in that amount of time and how much sitting they had to do. And they may or may not be able to go outside and run around at all. And it, it would bother me as their teacher because I didn't really have much leniency in what I could teach or what I could do. I really had to stick to the state curriculum and what the state requires but it just really bothered me to see these little children that have to sit there all day long and just kind of like memorize these different things right. and so like when I had kids I just knew I wanted something different for them and so one of my biggest goals not just academically but in their childhood is like creating an overall childhood experience for them that is full of play and adventure and that's very normal for a kid to want to do yeah, right right like i feel like that's as much learning as also learning things that are in the books because i feel like you can't you can't ever go back and have that experience you know 
you can only have that as a child. So giving them that extra space and that extra time once their schoolwork's done to explore and just to be kids and not to be, you know, so rushed or have to sit still for so long or, you know, that was kind of a really important thing to me. And the other thing, and I know is important, you have no control over what they're being taught when they go to public school, right. especially that's a lot different than it was when I was growing up. But, that's very true. But you, you have no control. You've got, mm-hmm. you may have a teacher that's got completely different beliefs than you that are, right. that are cramming that down your flesh and blood's throat. <laughs> you know, right. That, that's that's a, very true. And that is... They've got the right to believe whatever they want, but at the same time, you've got a right to to raise your children the way you think Mm -hmm. God intended you to raise them, right? Right. That's exactly right. right. So let's let's talk about how you do this. And again, you got eleven year old, a four year old, all different places. Just talk about a little bit. They're all doing different stuff. Talk about how you do it, Drew. Just walk through a day and a week, and just give a little bit examples of how you go about getting these kids educated. Okay. Okay, well, it doesn't it does doesn't ever really look perfect because that's just real life. But it this is my first year having all four of them doing school because last year Lincoln's in kindergarten and Nayad's doing pre K. But before last year, I just had the older two. So this is this has been a learning curve teaching all four of them this year. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. But Lennox has a lot, now that she's in fifth grade, a lot of her school is, she has a lot more independent work that she does. So she'll start on her independent work in the mornings while I work with Heinz usually. And when I'm done working with Heinz, he does some of his independent things while I work with Lincoln. And Naya joins in with Lincoln on a couple of things. So that's how we usually work that out. So as Lennox and Hines get older, their independent work will grow, which will give me more time to work with Lincoln as his subjects grow. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just don't know how you do it. And you do it so well that they know what they're doing. They know what you have them doing and they know what they're supposed to do. And they're learning. I mean, they, the truth of the matter is they are, they are ahead of most kids their age academically. I mean, you can be around them and listen to the vocabulary and everything else. It's amazing. <laughs> so what curriculum are you using? Do you have a curriculum or you, you create mm-hmm. your own? Or tell me a little bit about that. Oh, no. There's so many good curriculums. I don't think anybody should have to go to the work of creating their own curriculum. There's so many good options. Um, what I use is called Heart of Dakota. And it's a, um, a Christ-centered curriculum. And I've used it right since Linux was in kindergarten, and I just love it. So I've worked through the books, through each of those books with them. And uh, they just, it has a lot of play-based learning involved in it. A lot of, like, you've been to our medieval feast right. <laughs> that we did when we were learning about that time period. So it has a lot of things that you can add in to make it come alive, I guess you could say. Yeah, you're, and, you're always doing these projects. You've got them doing that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, and it, it's all written into the curriculum, which saves me from having to come up with this stuff on my own. So that's really nice. But there's there's really a homeschool curriculum for every personality. That's what I like to do. But people that aren't into crafting and doing all these different things, there's other curriculums that don't require or don't suggest those kinds of things too. So. But that's that's what I like to do. So, like, for instance, Hines, you know that his, I suppose he's going to be an engineer or something because he can <laughs> build anything. I mean, he, he would rather be yeah. building something than doing anything. And mm-hmm. so you obviously with him all day, every day, you see that. And so you're mm-hmm. feeding that to him, right? I mean, you're, you're right. taking what he's bent to do, what is in his right. heart to do, and you're, you're putting it putting that in front of him right and and only right. enhancing it so you get to do that with all your kids exactly and that's that's the best thing about it it's just kind of seeing i can see where they are and i can grow grow them in areas that they're interested in and grow them in ways that i know that they are going to want to develop further in their life and then areas that are more of a struggle i'm also able to t- tailor my teaching to help them you know so it's not 
I hate this subject because I'm not good at it. I don't want my kids to say that about any subject because there's no reason they have to hate it. I'm their teacher. I can adapt to what they are struggling with and make it fun. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so. you got them cooking stuff. And I'm a good question. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you were getting it from a curriculum. I just thought you were creating all that stuff and making it up. Oh, <laughs> but, but, uh, I mean, it would take a lot of time to do that, but. You are very creative. Trust me. You're very creative. You do. You take what they got, but you make it better than probably anybody else that's doing it. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, thank you. It's amazing what you do. Is there anything about all this that makes you nervous, that keeps you up at night wondering, I hope I'm doing it right, or do you feel pretty confident? you feel uh, that you're doing what God wants you to do and it's working the way you want it to work? I mean, I feel really I feel really sure that I'm following the calling that God put on my heart, and that is to raise these kids. And it sounds so simple. It sounds like a simple calling, but it's like, to me, it's it's everything. I feel like that is my life's goal. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, it At is. At least for right now. And I can tell you, it's, it's, it's not simple because... You not only are raising four kids, but you're a wife to a husband. You're maintaining a household. You're, you're doing everything that you have to do. If that's not a full-time job, what you're doing, I don't know what is. That is, you know, used to people would say the husband works and the wife stays at home. That, that is not the case. You're, you're working. You've got to be tired when you put your head down at night for what you're doing all day, every day. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not much downtime, that's for sure. Oh, there, there's not. And you've got, when Luke comes home and then you're cooking and, folks, you just got to know her. When she, the birthday party she puts on, she makes all the cakes, she decorates them, she decorates the parties. You, If you don't follow her or see some of the stuff she's done on, it's on some of us on social media, most of us not. It's absolutely amazing. Every time I look at it, I think, when does she have time to do this? How does she even... <laughs> I know she's got the talent to do it, but when does she have time to do it? It just blows my mind. Uh, so let me ask you this, Drew. What are you seeing f from them? I know some of the stuff you see them do makes you smile, and you've got to say to yourself, wow, I think this is working. I mean, I'm going to look at Lennox, for instance. Mm -hmm. she, she's such a mother to the younger ones. I mean, she helps you now, mm -hmm. I'm sure, helping them do their homework and everything else, right? Yes, she does. And she has a lot of school herself. So I don't ask her to do a lot of that. Um, just because I don't, I don't want to overwhelm her because she really does have a lot of school this year. But uh, when, if she's finished with something, she'll sit down with Lincoln and let him read to her or she's just she's a great big sister and her siblings really look up to her and respect her a lot. So um, and she's just as patient as you are with them. I mean, it's amazing. I, I can't imagine one day the mother she will be. It's just like mm -hmm, Melanie. She and, will be. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's no question about it. So let's go back, and we got to figure this out. What how, what time does your day start? What time do these kids start? I mean, sometimes they're doing their work in the pajamas, right? I mean, you know, it's not oh, yeah. like you got to get dressed up to go to school. So talk about what time mm -hmm. and what a, what a day looks like. Just kind of walk okay. through that. Okay, well, I usually get up around around 6, see Luke off, and I try to exercise. I can't say that I always do. And then usually the kids start, the Lincoln and Naya usually start getting up about 6.30, and Lennox and Hines have gotten to where they sleep a little later. But we're pretty much all ready for breakfast around 8 or 8.30, and they don't, I don't require them to get dressed every day because I just, I mean... I don't know. I pick my battles. Sure. Prior, what's really important and what is not so important. And to me, that's not so important. Do you cook a full breakfast or are you eat cereal or you mix it up? Or how do you do that? Well, I just honestly, I really just make whatever that they want to eat, which is usually nothing complicated. I mean, they, if I did make a big breakfast, they would, you know, kids are so picky. Yeah, sure. They wouldn't really eat it. So I just make what they like and they eat breakfast and then we get started on school and but you know it really varies sometimes times will get up at seven and say hey, mommy can we start my school now because i can get done early and so we'll pop in the school room and get his school done and then he's outside in the woods you know so I, I try to be very if i try to be too rigid i'm just gonna get frustrated and disappointed <laughs> uh -huh. so i had i try to 
leave myself a lot of flexibility. How many hours of, of teaching this actual school work do you do a day? Is that does that vary? It it does vary. the The law is four and a half hours. That's the Georgia law for homeschooling, and I would say it takes at least that. But it does vary from day to day. Some days it's more, some days a little less. It just depends on what we have in our curriculum that day, really. And some days we'll spend extra time on something that we're really enjoying, you know. So sometimes it takes a little longer or a little less. You have to get them tested from time to time. Is that are you doing that, or is that mm -hmm. is that part? They of have to be. Yeah, they have to be tested every three years. And so Lennox took hers in third grade, and Heinz will take one this year. As far as grade level, she was above, I'm sure, right? Oh yeah, she she was. Um, I think her highest one was vocabulary, and she tested it like the end of seventh grade level but she was in third grade yeah I, you can tell by the, all of them the vocabulary is better than mine i can tell you that it's absolutely <laughs> it's unbelievable so the other the question people have for you and not that they've asked me this but i just know how in the world you got to have a lot of patience it's got to get hectic how do you how do you balance all of this how do you balance being a wife and a home we didn't have to talk about your decorating yet and but just we're going to talk about that but being a wife keeping house being a teacher how do you do it I mean, how, how do you keep calm yeah. you've got a special god's given you a special personality to be able to handle all that and keep calm you're the most calm person i've ever met in my life <laughs> well i mean it does it's i'm not gonna lie it does get stressful for sure but I really just, I've tried to keep focused on what is important. What are my priorities? And the kids' school is my number one priority because that's on my shoulders. <laughs> Their education is resting on my shoulders, so that really comes before everything. Um, and so, you know, there's definitely times that the house gets behind and the laundry gets behind and different things like that. But I don't know. I think a lot of it is just perspective and trying to keep in mind what's really important. And I try to pray a lot yeah. <laughs> and ask the Lord to help me and show me what, what he wants. What does he want my day to look like? What's important? What do my kids need the most and in he, this day? He just, you know? he just leads you along as you go. And I, That's exactly it. Another thing, Drew, is you, you're seeing their spiritual growth you you see mm -hmm. it firsthand how mm -hmm. your kids pray your kids mm -hmm. find interest in spiritual things that that certainly wouldn't be getting that at school in this world we live in having a spiritual foundation i think is not just kind of important it's real important if, if you mm -hmm. look from my perspective don't you agree i know that's got to be satisfying oh, yeah. as you you not only the education but a big part right. of that is the the Christian education, discipling them, yeah, yeah. discipling them to to know what's right and wrong, and to know right. what the Bible says, and all that. I know that's a big part of what you're doing as well. Right. Well, it is, and I mean, since I'm not really, I'm home all the time. I'm not really out working or doing other things. They're, I guess, in a way, like my mission field. <laughs> you know, like their their little hearts are what God's given me or entrusted to me to teach them about him and about his love for them. And so we get to talk about those things all day long and different things that come up or squabbles between siblings or it just, it comes up all the time and we're able to talk about it and work through their problems and pray together. And I'm just so thankful for that opportunity, you know, and, also having a husband that understands that importance too because you know not all husbands really see that that value so i i really appreciate luke and how he's always been a hundred percent in my corner about staying home with the kids and so since you started having kids you've been you stayed at home really you hadn't been out mm -hmm. I could, don't say that you don't work Outside, you working? <laughs> it's just that you're doing it, and and that's your number one priority. And Drew, I want to tell you, as a gray-headed fellow, even if I wasn't your daddy-in-law, as a gray-headed fellow who's been around a bush a time or two, you you you're creating a masterpiece. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, it's uh, emotional to me to even talk about it. But uh, those kids are going to be something else. You're creating a wonderful, wonderful thing with these kids. It just blows my mind. But in a, and you said something a while ago, well, and, and this is true, they're still kids. And they get mad right. with each other. And they mm-hmm. it's like everybody else's kids, whether you homeschool or school, wherever. They get in fights and fuss and fight. And you have to get in the middle of them. But the difference is you don't send them to the principal's office. You send them and let them talk through what's right and wrong and how to handle stuff when it goes wrong, right? Right, yes. A lot more, more of our day is spent doing that than I'd like to admit. Yeah, but they're human beings. But, yeah, yeah and it's, it's part of them learning and growing and learning how to be grown-ups one day wow so i know also you have a ton of followers i don't i don't even know how many you have on instagram i I don't know how often you keep that up you've got a instagram account says the light it's called the light homestead talk about that and and what you're doing well i really don't keep up with it as much as i wish i did i guess but i can't understand why I don't know. I, I don't. It doesn't always occur to me to post things. I don't know why. Lennox will always say, "You should post about that, Mama." And I'm like, "Oh, I guess I should." <laughs> so she she's better at that than I am. It's really was it. I just posted, created it, I guess, as a outlet for just sharing pictures of our house and while I was working on little DIY projects and stuff, and then. It's kind of just more or less morphed into sharing just different things about our family. Yeah, but you also have a knack for decorating. You're very good with your hands, creating stuff. You, you do these do-it-yourself projects, and people just get blown away by the decorating you do in your house and the decorating you do at parties and all that. So that's a, obviously a gift you have, and it's a love you have to do that. I know there was a time... And, you know, people were paying you to go decorate their house, too. And uh, you obviously very good at it. They wouldn't be paying you if you were not. <laughs> so you hear from followers all the time, especially when you were st- posting uh, about your house. I know you get a lot of feedback from people, right? Yeah, everyone there has been very sweet and very encouraging. Um, I wish I had more time to devote to that sort of thing. But I know I will one day. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, part of my priority. Remembering my priorities, I guess. Yeah, that's that's but, not at the top of the list, but you know. right, it's not. But I do. I love to be creative and create. Creating is kind of like that's that's what I love. That's my thing. Yeah. Well, you're very good. But right now, I'm creating uh, people. <laughs> you're creating grown ups. That that's what you're creating. You're creating mm-hmm. wonderful people that will contribute greatly to society and and in God's kingdom that's what you're creating it it's uh it's your best creation but you're also so gifted in doing Thank this you. other stuff and it's it's just fun to watch it and you know most people look at it Drew and say how does she even have time to do that how does she have time with what she's doing and uh you you you're a great balancing act i think is what you would call it but wow so let me just go back and a little bit about homeschooling do, do you think you mentioned you certainly don't have to be a trained teacher like you are to homeschool. Do you think homeschooling is for everybody, or do you think maybe it's for some people? There may be people listening to this that are, that are thinking about doing it, thinking that they should do it, but maybe afraid to do it. And of course, there's some that probably know they can't do it financially. They they work. And they got to make money. Mm-hmm. What encouragement do you have for people? I mean, there are people also – that go to public schools and turn out great, you know. It's, you oh know, yeah, you know, absolutely. It's, it's, there's a lot of people that that do fine. It's not like a fail safe thing, whatever no. you do. And I know there's some homeschool kids that hadn't turned out too well either. It's just absolutely. It's just, it's just your formula works. That's for sure. So talk to people that are listening to this that are thinking about homeschooling, or or make them feel confident if their kids are. In school, and it's in a public school, and it's working. Just give a, give a little bit of your heart on that. I think that any parent that has the desire to homeschool can homeschool. And I feel like if you've got that desire in your heart, 
or God probably put it there for a reason. Maybe that's what your child needs and um, that you, you can do it. And if you think about the history of the world, parents have been teaching their children for all the time. <laughs> you know, like sin, going to school is relatively a newer concept than parent being taught in the home. So True. any parent can teach their kid if they feel that on their heart. I'm convinced of that. Um, there's a lot, there's just so many resources. There's so many different types of curriculum. There's so many different ways to do it. Um, I, I think that that's very possible if it's in your heart. But if it's not, I think that there are children or families and lots of them that the Lord wants those children to go to school and their parents need to have their jobs that he has them there for a reason and those children are going to do great and he's going to use their school experiences to raise them the way that he wants them to be and so I think that if you're just seeking the Lord and you know what he's calling you to do for your family you can feel confident in that and Right. They don't have to do it the same way you do it. And the truth is this. Oh, no. God can use them mm -hmm. to, to touch people in school that, that, Absolutely. that would never be touched. And then for your kids, there's going to be a day that they're going to be confronted with the real world. There's no question. Mm -hmm. it's, just, Absolutely. it's just what age do you want your kids to be confronted? I mean, you got them in an isolated environment. One day they're going to be confronted with all of it. But... Mm -hmm. Your your goal is to to give them the foundation to be able to handle it, and just like right. you have done, just like Corey has done. Your, your perfect example, uh, right? You, you are you, you've got all the social graces, and you can handle anything that comes your way. You're so strong. Your foundation of faith is strong, and you can handle it. So it's not like you're trying to keep your kids from the world. You no, you just uh -uh. you just you deciding what age. They need to be when they have to deal with the world, right? And right. Are, they, are they ready for it? Wow. Right. Well, it comes in smaller doses, I guess. And I'm able to, I'm here to talk about things with them as it comes up. And um, so that, that's that been important to me. Yeah. And, and they're also involved with stuff. I mean, they're playing ball. They dance. Mm -hmm. They're with people right. that, that are not homeschooled. I mean, they, they, oh, yeah. they're already getting exposed to stuff. But it's just the timing of it. But, you know, th this is not, this whole purpose of this conversation is not to be a discouragement to people who are sending their kids to school. That, that may not oh, be no. what you're supposed mm -hmm. to do. But there Definitely may, not. But there may be some people that are, they've got it on the mind and think that they they want to do it, but they're afraid to, to take that leap. And right. it's just, I think it's intriguing enough to have this conversation and let people hear what your heart is and, and, and what you're doing. Well, I, I do get messages a good bit on my Instagram of moms that say, you know, I'm thinking about homeschooling or I've, I've, I really want to homeschool, but it just is so overwhelming. It's so scary. And I'm just not sure where to start. A lot of I get a lot of those sort of messages. And I just try to encourage those moms that if, if that's in your heart to do then you can do it. And it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to look perfect. It may not, it's not going to look like anyone else's homeschool necessarily, but um, you will, you can do it. You can do it and God will give you the grace to handle it. Yeah. And especially in today's time with computers and stuff, it's not like it used to be. You can get, get the curriculums and you as a way to mm -hmm. do this, that's it's created for you. It's not like you just start from scratch. Oh no. But, yeah. Uh, there's so many resources. Yeah. But there's probably some, attributes they need to be sure they've got when they start a like, little bit of patience and probably a lot of patience and a little, <laughs> little bit of organization because it w it could be a catastrophe if you if you're not organized and you get and you not end up not doing what you're supposed to do with the kids yes. and keep, keep them educated or get them it's educated. Gotta be a, it's got to be your priority that's for sure yeah so how long do you take off in the summer with them just like the school year you kind of keep keep mm -hmm. up with their calendar yeah, we do. We do 180 days of school, and then we take our summer break between those days. So, pretty pretty similar to the regular school calendar. I, I we both we all like having the summer off. Oh yeah, I'm sure you you need it, and they need it. Yeah. So right. Well, it seems like the school system's 
breaks are getting lesser and lesser. Uh, maybe they spread it out. I don't know, but it seems like their summer break is short. But I think they take more breaks during the year, I guess. Well, anyway. Yeah, I think they do, yeah. Well, Drew, you're doing an amazing job with everything you do and everything you touch. Probably another question people want to know, though, is – your husband is crazy, and he's he's doing, and I say that in a good way, he's very funny. He's he's had a large following on social media. <laughs> but how in the world do you put up with that? <laughs> now, I know people want to know. <laughs> I know you just let, let him be Luke, right? Yes. Yes, I do. He's just, there's just never a dull moment. That's the best way to describe it. <laughs> Oh I told him when we were dating, I said that, you know, if we broke up, I would never be able to date anybody else because I would be so bored after him having dated you because it's just always, always an adventure. Wow. You're absolutely amazing. And I wanted the listeners on here to hear you. I know and meet you that haven't met you. I also want them to know a little bit about heart your heart about this homeschooling thing i know it's getting more and more intriguing is there a, some data that that there's more and more people homeschooling now or you do you see that or is there anything out there like that i i haven't i haven't seen but it, i wouldn't be surprised and even just for the convenience of when all the schools were closing i know a lot of people started homeschooling just because it was easier to just be home than to have to go back and forth between, right. you know, doing your school on, at home versus back to school, back and forth. I didn't think about that, but I thought about it when it was happening, but I hadn't thought about this conversation. During COVID, you, you didn't miss a beat, did you? you just no, kept, our days didn't change at all. You just kept doing what you were doing. Right. So, Drew, what's your message to people listening out here about life and love and faith or whatever about kids? What, Mamas that are listening, just just say whatever is on your mind. Mm -mm. It's nothing like putting a little pressure on you. I know. (laughs) um, You know, I feel like my the thing I would most say to other mamas out there are really the biggest thing I can say is to spend time in prayer and talking to God because honestly, like. I don't think I could be the mom that does these things. I know I couldn't if I didn't have the strength from God and I did if I didn't have him guiding me and helping me stay focused and keeping my perspective on what's important and that's not always perfect but he's always there for me to go back to and he always really just helps me along and I don't think that there's any secret to motherhood or to doing it all right. And I think the only secret is to just live a life that's close to Jesus, honestly. And pour your life into your kids. Obviously, you're doing that. Right. Well, if you do the first thing, then the next thing naturally follows. You just, he naturally gives you that heart for your children. And um, you're able to, I guess, see what he sees in them and foster that. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Hey, Daddy, this is Luke. I just walked in. Uh, I was just hoping maybe you were done with Drew so she can come back to the zoo in here. I'm having a hard time. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad you did that. Viewing life from a hearse it could be worse laugh think and cry with the country undertaker